Welcome back friends. Uh, today we are going to start current electricity as one among the topics in advanced physics. So when we are talking of current electricity, it's simply the study of electric charges or electrons in motion. In a static electricity, or we are calling it as electrostatics, we are starting with the stationary electrons, the electrons which do not move. But in the current electricity, we are starting with the electrons in motion. So we'll start with different phenomena which electrons, when they are in motion, they exert the uh, different phenomena or behaviors. So the electric current that flows through the conductor is caused by the electronic charge or electrons in motion. The electrons which are flowing through the conductor, they are the one which, which are uh, causing the current to flow. So simply we can say that current, electric current is the flow of electrons, electric current. So an electric current is defined as the amount of electric charge passing through a given section of a conductor per unit time is the amount of electric charge but this amount of electric charge can be measured by looking at how many electrons they are passing through the conductor at that time so the number of electrons will determine the amount of electric charge which is passing through the conductor at a certain uh, time so basically electric current is the scalar quantity since quantity of charge is scalar quantity and the time in the scalar quantity. So mathematically, we can say that electric current I is equal to Q divided by T. So this is the mathematical expression for electric current is equal to Q divided by T. That is the mathematical expression for electric current. Now where Q is the quantity of charge and T is the time taken for the electric charge to pass through a given section of the conductor. So I, the current flowing through the conductor. Now, if the rate of flow of charge is constant, if the rate of flow of charge is constant, then you can say uh, there is no change in the amount of electrons passing through the conductor. So if the rate of flow of charge is constant, that means it does not change with the time, then the current is said to be steady current. Given by the equation I is equal to QT, we can let this to be called the equation 1. But if the rate of, of charge flowing is not constant, then the rate of flow of charge is varying with the time. Then the instantaneous current that flow in a circuit or conductor is said to be variable current and is given by current I is given by current I is equal to dQ dt. So as we know from our equation that current I is equal to Q divided by T. If this current is variable, now we'll need to integrate. So we'll get um, current I is equal to dQ dt. That means dQ is charge and dt is the variation of time. Change in charge divided by change in time. That is current. So to get the total current, you will need to integrate. That means from here, dq will be is equal to i, then dt. So to get the total charge, uh, you reintegrate uh, the charge from charge q1 to charge q2, then dq. In this side, you integrate i uh, from dt from time t1 to time t2. So this is the kind of integration we'll do or we'll perform so that to get the, the, the total quantity of charge Q. So total quantity of charge Q simply will be the integration of charge from charge Q1 here uh, in our notes from charge Q1 to charge Q2. And uh, sometimes this Q1 is zero and this Q2 is a certain charge Q. And here the integration from time T1 to time T2. That's how we can uh, just get the instantaneous current, instantaneous current. So, tunachukisema ni kwamba charge Q itakuwa sawa na I, then DT, integration from time T1 to time T2. That is how we can get the quantity of charge. So, the SA unit for current is ampere A, 
and the essay unit for charge uh, and time the year columns C and seconds S respectively. So the essay unit for charge is column and the essay unit for time is second. The essay unit for charge is ampere. So but by definition, we can define a coulomb in the quantum electric charge, which is flowing through a section of a conductor in one second when a current of one ampere flow in a conductor. Uh, so simply the, the definition of a coulomb, as we know Q uh, is equal to IT. And we know that the unit of current is ampere and that of time uh, it is second. So one coulomb, one coulomb will be is equal to quantity of charge passing through a conductor if a current of one ampere passing in a conductor in one second. So current of one ampere passing through a conductor in one second, that quantity of charge is equal to one coulomb. So a coulomb is the quantity of electric charge which is flowing through a section of a conductor in one second when a current of one ampere flows in a conductor. And the definition of an ampere, again, remember from here, a current I will be equal to Q divided by T. So definition of an ampere, it will be equal to current uh, current passing through a conductor when a charge of one coulomb passes through a conductor in one second. When a charge of one coulomb passing through a conductor in one second. So the direct current flowing through a conductor, if any section, at any section, one coulomb of charge flows in one second. One coulomb of charge flows in one second. So now let's go to discuss about the model of electric conduction. How the electric, con uh, electric charge they are conducted through a conductor. So as we know, and as we shall discuss later in, in electronics, that um, we have three types of materials. We have conductors, we have insulators, and we have um, semiconductors. So in the conductors, we have the flow of electrons. Let's say we are drawing the, the conductor here. And if this is our conductor, then you have our electron here. This electron undergoes random motion. If there is no charge, if there is no charge, the electron undergoes random motion. So the electron can go this direction back forth the random motion of electrons to different directions so electron yenda ivi ikashuka pale ikaenda pale ilivotoka pale ikarudi pale ikaenda pale electron ilivotoka pale electron ikapanda pale ikashuka pale ikaenda pale hii electron ikashuka pale ikapanda pale ikashuka pale and final electron ikaenda ivi so kama kuna kwa kuna charge electron inakuwa ina, ina random motion kama hivyo. <coughs> kwa unachokisema ni kwamba in any metallic material charge carries are electrons. So the charge carriers vitu ambavyo vinakuwa vina carry charge vinabeba charge ni nani? Ni electrons. In absence of external potential difference that means if V is equal to zero, the potential difference is equal to zero and no internal field that is E. Field is written as E. So if there is no electrical field inside the conductor, if E is equal to zero, the electrons are in lambda motion. This motion is called a the thermal motion. Why it is called a the thermal? It is because it is influenced by heat. Because the presence of heat energy is the one which tend to influence the motion of these electrons in the conductor. And this motion, it is random. Come on found from the uh, kinetic theory of matter. E random Emotion electron and And like in gas molecule, the electrons are free to move in all possible direction with its possible velocities. So electrons in as can move in a different direction with different possible velocities. These velocities are called the thermal velocity. Thermal velocity. So in absence of external electrical field, electron has no specific direction. But in, in the presence of the external electrical field, electron will start to follow a certain direction and thus the movement of electron will be in a certain direction. So, can I talk about the quantum control lambda motion of electron like this way in absence of external electrical field, in absence of external electrical field. So, under the applied external potential difference, 
and the applied external potential difference if V is not equal to zero, also internal field E will not be equal to zero. So the negative charge that are electrons drift from negative to positive terminal of the source. So that means, uh, for example, we have the conductor here. Let's say we have the conductor here. And in, if this is our conductor, let's say this is our conductor. And from here, uh, let's say we have the negative terminal here. And here is the positive terminal. So inside we have the electrons. We have many of them, but we are drawing one as the representative. If we have the negative terminal and here the positive terminal, this electron you tend to move with a certain velocity. We call it as the VD. And in name we call it the drifty velocity. The electron you tend to drift. So let's see how can we calculate the expression for the drifty velocity. How can we derive the expression for the uh, drift velocity? If we have the cross-sectional area of the wire A, and if we have the, the potential difference or the, the electrical field across the conductor, how can we calculate the expression for the drift velocity VD? Now, consider this diagram. From this diagram, we have the positive terminal and here the negative terminal. So having the positive terminal and the negative terminal, that means the electrons will move from this direction of negative because uh, the negative charge in the negative terminal of the battery will tend to repel with the negative charge in the electron. So electron will move from this uh, negative terminal towards the positive terminal. And the electric current will be moving in different direction. So that the direction of um, electric current is different with the direction of uh, electrons. Electrons, they are moving in this direction, electric current, uh, electric current in this direction, electrons in this direction. So we are saying that uh, electric field will be moving in the direction the same as the direction of electric current. That means in this direction. So the, the velocity of electric charge when there is electric field is called the drift velocity. The drift velocity. And by definition, drift velocity of an electron can be defined can be defined as the velocity of electron when an electric field is set up. Velocity of an electron when electric field is set up. Now, let's see how can we calculate the expression for the drift velocity of an electron. Now, consider a conductor of length L and cross-sectional area A in which a current I is flowing after applying an external potential difference V between the end C of a conductor. So we have the length of the conductor L, and then you have the drift velocity VD, then you have the area A. This electron is drifting from negative uh, terminal to the positive terminal. Then the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Now we are saying, if the number of electrons per unit volume, it is N, flows in a conductor, number of electrons per unit volume. So uh, number of electrons per unit volume that means, in other words, we can call it the electron density. Electron density. So the number of electrons per unit volume, n small n, will be equal to capital N, which is number of electrons, divided by volume of the conductor, which is V. Now, from here, the number of electrons is represented by capital N. Capital N is the number of electrons, V the volume of material, and N is the number of electrons per unit volume. And sometimes it is called the, uh, the charge or electron density or the concentration of electron charge per given volume of the conductor. Now from this equation, uh, making subject any which is the number of electron, we will get any at the small n which is the charge density or the electron density multiplied by volume, multiplied by volume. Now we know uh, that the number of electrons is equal to small n multiplied by volume. But we know that volume is equal to area times length, area times length. And then we shall see how can we get the final answer if we substitute um, the volume in this equation. Then finally, to see the equation of uh, electric charge and the equation of drift velocity. So from there we are saying that um, but volume V will be equal to area times length. So substituting uh, this equation in the first equation, we will get any which is the number of electrons is equal to charge density times area time, uh, times length. So if each electron has a charge E, we know the charge of electron, it is E. 
and um, we know the value of this charge. Then the total charge in the conductor it is Q. So total charge Q will be equal to any E, any E, any is the number of electron then times C electronic charge. But remember N is equal to charge density area times length. So you get um, total charge Q is equal to charge density area length electronic charge. Then solving for current I, current I will be equal to uh, quantity of charge Q divided by time. So current I will be equal to uh, charge density area length electronic charge divided by time. But we know length divided by time, it is PD, or velocity. If it is in a specific direction, length divided by time, it is a velocity. So, but length divided by time is equal to velocity, which is drift velocity. So, current I will be equal to a charge density, electronic charge, area, drift velocity. So, therefore, the drift velocity of an electron, VD, will be equal to current I divided by charge density, electronic charge, times C area of the conductor that is the expression for the drift velocity the expression for the drift velocity but if we want to calculate the charge density uh, charge density is equal to quantity of charge is equal to current flowing divided by cross-sectional area so uh, i mean current density is, is not a charge density it is current density so current density is defined as the current flowing through a conductor per cross-sectional area of the conductor. So current density J is equal to current flowing I divided by cross-sectional area A. So J will be equal to I divided by A. But remember, uh, we got I uh, in our equation, we get I is equal to NEAVD. Then if we divide this by area, we will get uh, charge density is equal to... Uh, I mean current density. This is current density now. So you get current density is equal to charge density, electronic charge times C, drift velocity, drift velocity. So the final equation will be will not be having this area, the final equation for the current density. So the final equation for current density looks like this way with the charge density, electronic charge and the drift velocity. So this marks the end of our first session in a current system. In the second session, we'll start our discussion regarding about the electrical resistance, resistivity, and conductivity of a material by electron theory. So I know all of us, we know about the resistance, resistivity, and the conductivity of a material. Conductivity is just like the reciprocal of resistivity because resistance is the ability of a material to resist the flow of electric charge. So resistivity differs from one material to another. Resistivity. Resistivity, the ability of resistance is like a phenomena. So we shall see all of this uh, based on the electron theory we have already discussed. We will discuss them. So the AC unit for the current density will be equal to ampere divided by a meter square because the AC unit of current it is ampere and the SA unit of area it is meter square so i hope every one of you have understood and um, you can join my telegram group you can join our telegram group which is dr Mlelo students you can join it for discussion you can share the session to your fellow students and you can do a lot asking questions comment in the pro in in the video if you have understood or not and doing a lot with us Thank you, everybody, and uh, let me wish you nice studies. Thank you.